Now from the Columbia Basin, your local news source, this is iFiber One News, presented in high definition. The number one source for real-time local news, local sports headlines, and our very own Weather Center forecast covering the entire Columbia Basin. With your iFiber One News team, reporting news in real time as it's happening. From the iFiber Communications HD broadcast studio in Ephrata, Washington, this is iFiber One News, and it starts now. Welcome to iFiber One News. I'm Alan Troop with your weekend edition. We will review some of the top stories for this week and a few of your favorites. And we have the latest weather forecast for the Columbia Basin from the iFiber One Weather Center. Our top story this week was the death of Soap Lake icon Brent Blake. He passed away early Tuesday morning at Central Washington Hospital after a months long battle with leukemia. The 70 year old former Seattle architect left an impact on Soap Lake. He was responsible for an art museum which drew artists from across the Northwest to display their work. Blake's most well-known idea was to build a 65-foot tall lava light in the city, which drew attention from news outlets and was featured in a documentary film. It was one of several ideas the artist and inventor created, which also included the idea of creating a model of Stonehenge designed to look like lava soap. He called the idea Soaphenge. In January, iFiber One News reporter Ryan Lancaster conducted an interview with Blake. Here is the story with additional footage. Brent Blake and Soap Lake have become nearly synonymous over the years. After retiring from an illustrious career as an architect in Seattle, Blake moved to town to work on his art and open what's become one of the area's social hubs, the Soap Lake Art Museum. The few locals who don't know of Blake are almost certainly familiar with his oft-talked-about brainchild, the giant lava lamp. The minute I thought of that idea, 65-foot giant lava lamp, I thought to myself, this is the weirdest idea that I could have come up with. And I know in my mind that the media is going to have a great time with it. They're going to have real fun with it. That they did, and the wacky idea opened the eyes of the world to a small town in eastern Washington. That's a legacy, uh, and it's part of the culture of Soap Lake no matter what happens. If nothing ever gets done or built, there was so much churning about the idea in, in all of the local papers and everything else that, that, that I'll be connected with that for, for, forever. But the giant lava lamp is just one of thousands of unconventional ideas the artist has come up with over the years. Many of Blake's sketches and other memorabilia were on display at a party held in his honor in November. Brent's one of the most talented people I've ever known in my life. I mean, there's nothing the guy can't do. The event was a sort of living wake put on by Blake's many friends shortly after he was diagnosed with leukemia. Doctors told Blake he had about two months to live. And I, you know, have no clue. I mean, I've been judged uh, or been determined by the doctors that I'm terminal. I got a very short period of time, but the oddity of all that is that I feel quite, you know, like I might go on for 20 years or something. Blake says he didn't know what to expect, but he's feeling pretty good these days. The illness does make him a bit weak, but it's no match for his continual good humor. And everybody says I, I look good, and, and that's because they're expecting me to look bad, I guess. <laughs> so. Blake turns 70 in July, although he says he feels a few decades younger than that. I've always been 30 years old, you know, up here, see. And then as I got older, uh, on my 70th birthday, I thought to myself, I'm not sure I'm 30 anymore. I mean, I might be 37 or something but I, I'm not 30 anymore. He set the bar so damn high for the rest of us. Yeah. The November party was a humbling experience for him. Well, it was, um, uh, well, just difficult to, you know, be hearing these things and, and not be affected by, and having great gratitude for the kindness of people and the goodness of people and, and whatever little influences I've had on people's lives. Blake, who spent much of his youth growing up in Moses Lake, says he came back to the basin for a number of reasons. I started looking when to come back, I was thinking I want to get over here because I'd, I'd like to ride my Harley, paint pictures and poke around in caves, you know, that was my objective, sort of. 
He thought about settling in a number of towns in the area, but there was something about Soap Lake. I don't know, it's like the healing elements of the lake were floating in the air and it just was starting to affect me uh, in, in some odd manner. And then um, uh, I kept meeting uh, interesting people, like I'm in some kind of a movie. Or I, I keep kidding people that I love the movie I'm living in here. This is my instant lunch chair. In 2000, he bought an old brick building that once housed a spa and remodeled it into an apartment and museum. There, he's hosted an uninterrupted stream of art events. And then it became an ideal circumstance. I was uh, living in a cool Seattle condo upstairs, like, and then I had a gallery space that I could display my own art or other people's art. He's hosting another party on Saturday, February 2nd, from 7 to 11 p.m. at the Soap Lake Art Museum. The event will feature live music and Blake's own work. Blake says everyone's invited. Here in, in this Soap Lake, there's people from every strata of life and every circumstance, and I've tried to be a friend and to all of them and to be kind and good to everybody. For more on the upcoming show, call 509-855-6131 or visit SoapLakeForLocals.com. For iFiber One News, this is Ryan Lancaster reporting. And we will all miss Brent. It isn't often the commander of Fairchild Air Force Base visits Moses Lake, but when Colonel Brian Newberry took a tour, he got a chance to meet people, including the last commander of the Larson Air Force Base, Clyde Owen. Air Force Colonel Brian M. Newberry, commander of the 92nd Air Refueling Wing at Fairchild Air Force Base, visited Moses Lake on Tuesday, addressing a luncheon at Porterhouse Steakhouse. Joined by his wife Jill and his command chief, Wendy Hansen, Newberry for the first time toured Moses Lake International Airport. There, he said, Air Force pilots from Fairchild train aboard Air Force Stratotanker refueling aircrafts. Uh, up at Fairchild Air Force Base, we have 35 KC-135s assigned up here, and we do flying here in the local area to train for missions overseas. Newberry said he visited because he wanted to see Moses Lake International Airport's military and civilian facilities. Moses Lake has been a, a rich part of serving the military here for so many years and back in 2011 you all were instrumental in making a difference for us in supporting our base while our runway was shut down. I'm Jeff Chu for iFiber One News. Each of the people you see here has warrants for their arrest and is wanted by various law enforcement agencies. If you see any of these people, the DOC asks that you not attempt to detain or apprehend them, but to call police. You can also call the Department of Corrections at 509-764-6180 during the day or 509-762-1160 after 5 p.m. And we will be back after these messages with the latest from our iFiber One Weather Center, sports and more news.